Hi there, my name is Kelsey and today I will be talking to you about cutting down on fat and the benefits of decreasing consumption of saturated fats. So let's get started. So today we are going to talk first about what a balanced diet looks like, then we're going to talk about some different types of fat, um, and then how fats influence both heart health and diabetes. Then we'll talk about sources of fat, some key points for you to remember, and then some healthy swaps for you guys. All right, so first, what does a balanced diet look like? Well, a balanced diet is made up of three components called macronutrients, and this includes carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Now, there's not really a one size fits all for how much of each one each person needs. It kind of is gonna be unique for every individual, but there's recommended ranges of each one that you should consume. So for example, you should consume about 45 to 65% of your calories from carbohydrates, um, 10 to 35% of your calories from proteins, and 20 to 35% of calories from fat. Now, the important thing here is, is when you look at either distribution, fat is not the main component of the diet. Uh, there's more carbohydrates in the diet than there are fats, no matter if you're doing 20% calories from fats or 35% from fats. So we need fat in a balanced diet, but the key is, is that we don't need too much and we need the right types. So now let's talk about those types of fat. So we have, we can classify fat based on saturation. Well, what does that mean? If you look at um, what a fat is made out of, it's this chain of carbon molecules. And when a fat is saturated, that means that there is a hydrogen atom on every free available space. And because of that, it makes this stiff, rigid molecule. So trans fat also acts like a saturated fat. While there might not be a hydrogen in every space, it's still pretty straight and pretty stiff and rigid. Well, then we have unsaturated fat. And unsaturated fat means that not every available space has a hydrogen atom. So there's a free space here. And this allows the molecule to be more fluid and have a bent shape. So why does that matter? Why would I go into all of that chemistry to explain the types of fat? Well, because I want to highlight it is the rigid nature of saturated fat. So when we consume saturated fat, it becomes incorporated into our cells and our cell walls, and that rigidity makes cells not function as well. So now let's talk about how fat influences heart health. Saturated fat, the stiff rigid one, increases our LDL or our bad cholesterol. And I did a separate video on conquering cholesterol, so check that out for more information specifically on that topic. Then we have the unsaturated fat, and these include omega-3s, and this is correlated with lower blood pressure, and this is protective of heart disease. So now let's talk about dietary fat and diabetes. The key here is that saturated fat increases insulin resistance. Again, this is because of the rigid nature of saturated fat. So let's take a look at this picture here. We have a cell, and insulin acts as a key to open a door on a receptor that allows the glucose to come into the cell and out of the blood. Well, when we eat saturated fat and it gets incorporated into this cell membrane, it's going to make this receptor stiff and rigid and the insulin key is not going to be able to fit in or work as well to bring the glucose in. And this leaves the glucose in the blood, making your blood sugar remain high. Okay, so sources of fat. You can get fat from plants and you can get fat from animals. Plant sources include avocados, coconut, nuts, seeds, olives, and plant oils. And animal sources are foods like meats, milk, yogurt, ice cream, cheese, butter, and eggs. Now, here's kind of a picture to help tie it all together. So we have saturated fat, which mainly comes from animal products, meat, dairy, eggs. But coconut oil and palm oil, which are plant sources, also contain saturated fat. So one way to tell a difference between a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat is saturated fats are solid at room temperature. So think of a stick of butter or a jar of coconut oil, it's going to be solid when it's sitting at room temperature. 
And these are the ones that raise LDL cholesterol and triglycerides and they increase insulin resistance. Now we have the unsaturated fat, which is plant sources. And this includes avocados, nuts, seeds, olives, natural nut butters, and plant oils. And unlike saturated fat, unsaturated fat is liquid at room temperature. So think of a bottle of olive oil versus a stick of butter. And unsaturated fat is the ones that lower LDL cholesterol and they raise HDL, the good cholesterol, and they help to decrease insulin resistance. Okay, now let's talk about some healthy swaps that you can make to decrease the amount of fat that you're consuming. So if you're using eggs, try using some substitutes. So if you're making a breakfast scramble, uh, try using tofu instead. Uh, you can also substitute in something else for eggs when you're baking by using a chia egg or a flax egg. And all you have to do is mix one tablespoon of the seeds with two and a half tablespoons of water, mix it together, and it creates a texture that's similar as if you were to have cracked an egg into whatever you're baking. Next, you can try dry sauteing your veggies, and this means sauteing vegetables without added oil or fat. So you can substitute with water or vegetable broth and saute your veggies that way. And the third swap is to try a black bean burger. This allows you to still enjoy a burger, but without the saturated fat that comes in a beef patty or a chicken patty. Um, plus you get the benefit of plant protein, fiber, healthy carbs, vitamins, and minerals. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching.